Hey guys, welcome back. If you want to learn how to make this crazy spooky mirror for the haunted house, then guess what? I'm going to show you. And it's not that hard. It's actually pretty simple. I will show you this tutorial and you leave your questions, suggestions, or comments below and let me know how it works out when you try it. And don't forget to follow the Facebook page because I would love for you to post your images on there. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is some mirrors. Obviously, you definitely are going to need mirrors. So, they have to be glass, and if they're not glass, then they're not going to work as well. Okay, I don't even know if they'll work at all. I never tried it with a plastic one, but I'm assuming it won't. Then again, you know what they say when you assume. So, after that, you're going to need some haunted pictures. I just printed one off of the internet. I didn't see a copyright on it, so hopefully it's not. And then you need to practice cutting your mirrors if they're not already pre-made. Okay? Here's some. I took a picture of Dad and put it in there with his grumpy face and then turned it into a black and white photo and kind of did that in there. So I thought that was hilarious. Kind of incorporate him in the haunted house somehow. He might kill me for that when I get to the other side. But for now, it's kind of funny. All right, so my mirrors are obviously not perfect. I'm not a glass cutter, but they will work for this because it's a haunted house and I'm gonna put a frame around them anyway, so it's okay. All right, so for this tutorial and the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to cut your glass real quick. Then I'm gonna show you how to do it with these mirrors since they're already framed. If you wanna learn how to frame a mirror or frame something, watch the framing tutorial. Okay, first thing you need is a glass cutter. Bought this one, don't like it. Not at all, I'm not gonna use that. This one I got from Harbor Freight for like two bucks, I think it was, so it was pretty simple. Now, you need to have something cushiony underneath of your glass when you're cutting it. I don't know why, but that's what everybody tells me to do, so I'm following it, and that's what worked for me after I tried it the second time. I think it's so it gets a little bit of play in your uh, glass when you're pressing down so it doesn't pack, you know, come back at you and cut you. But Something cushiony. This is kind of cushiony because it's got the little plastic and it's got the little bubbles in it that gives. So, but you could use a piece of felt if you like too. Just remember, you are messing with glass. All right. So once you have your glass cut, you need a straight edge. You can use a ruler, anything really that has a straight edge on it. doesn't really matter as long as it's a straight edge. I mean, for Oh, honestly, you could even use a popsicle stick as long as it's a straight edge. Now, I'm going to show you what you need to do is you need to have your straight edge where you want it. Then you need to take the rolling wheel. It's like the glass cutter. I'm going to press down on it and you'll hear it crackle. They say only go over it once, but I'm not entirely sure that I actually did that enough. And then it snaps, just like that. The key is to get that corner started. So I usually go over that like real quick twice and then one straight line going all the way down and it snaps. That's it. It's that easy. And then you've got yourself a piece of mirror. But I will tell you this, you have to warm your cutter up. I don't know why, but they tell you to, and it actually works. Get yourself a plastic piece of, or a scrap piece of glass and just go over it a few times. Don't even worry about breaking the glass, you know, to try and square it up or whatever. Just get an extra piece and go over it and practice with it. Because when I first started, I was getting this little rough edge here. Because guess what? You see the difference in that compared to the straight edge that we just got? It's a big difference, okay? Um, for some reason, they need to get worked in a little bit. I don't know why, but trust me, you have to do it. All right, so get yourself a scrap piece. Now, you wanna take your mirror that you have. Okay, so 
some people on the internet have said to use paint thinner. That does not work for these mirrors. I don't know what kind of mirrors they have, but it definitely does not work for these. I've tried it on the back of them and whatever this is coated with, paint thinner does not take it off. So I'm gonna show you the way that I did the other mirrors and the way I'm gonna do this. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to peel off the fuzzy backing if you have it. And you need to get yourself a coarse piece of sandpaper. And then you're just going to sand it. You know, and keep sanding it. Over and over again until you start to get that etchiness in it. Now, you can do this on a sander if you're very careful. Sand it in various locations to give that effect of the middle being seen, but the side don't sand as much. Okay? And if you can see, you can start to see where there is light coming through. Hopefully you can see that. Okay? So, now, I'm going to sand the rest of this on the sander because I have a sander and it's a lot easier. But that's what you can do for yours if you don't have a sander. All right, so I sanded it, and as you can see, I put the paper behind it so you can see where it's at. There's little bits and pieces that are various locations. That's what you want because you want it to look like the image is going to be coming through of different areas, okay? Now, you can go back over it if you like. Here it is. And you can kind of soften it a little bit with some thinner paper and fog up that glass. Like, this is probably like a... Well, it says 220 on there, so it's very, very fine. You can hit some areas, give a little bit more, give a little bit less if you want. Just remember, whatever you do, that's not going to be replaceable unless you go buy mirror paint. All right, and then there you have it. There is your haunted mirror. It's that easy. See how she's got a little bit of black going across her nose? It's because of where I positioned the mirror. If you want her to come up more like she's coming out the top of it, then move the mirror around. As long as you don't see that line, it don't matter. Or rescale your picture. Same little scary face, just a different mirror. you can age this mirror as well, which I think I probably will do because honestly, that cream colored is too bright and pretty for a haunted house, which is where it's going to be. So for me, I'm going to age that real quick and do that. As far as this picture goes, you can take this and you can cut it out to fit this mirror. And the best way to do that is to take your finger and just kind of go around inside the hole of where the mirror is. And then cut it out. That kind of just went off my circle there a little bit. Did you see that? And then it pretty much fits. All right, then you can take your fuzzy backing that came with it and you can glue it back on or tape it back on. If you are doing a mirror that is like the ones that we cut, just use duct tape. That's what I did to the back of this one because it didn't have a fuzzy thing. I just did duct tape. All right, so now you want to press that down and boom, there is your mirror. Now let's age it a little bit. All right, so this is what I call my aging spray. I watered down some acrylic, put it in here. I'm going to shake it up. Hopefully it comes out. It's not dried out. Yep, it's coming out just fine. Okay, and then you got pretty much watered down acrylic. I just like this because it gets down in all of those little crevices 
that normally you wouldn't be able to get into very well. Because paint would be too thick. Don't worry about it if it gets on the mirror because it's just acrylic paint that's watered down so it will wipe off the mirror once everything is dry. All right, so that's that. Now, let me do a little bit of black. And I'm gonna just put it in the same one because you know, you start with the light and you end up with the dark and it's all fine, it just blends together. And then here I'm just kind of hitting a couple little areas, not too many completely. Go around on this here so that it looks like the brass is aged a little bit more. Hit the sides a tiny bit. All right, so now I've got some orange here. I'm just gonna dab the tip of this very, very little bit in there. And I'm just gonna kinda hit down where that water is just a little bit, the watered down paint, just to kinda give it a little bit more of a color in some areas. And while I'm doing this, I'm grabbing some of that black to mix in with that orange so it's not so bright. You can always go back over it with the brown. And then there you have an aged photo frame that looks a little bit more um, aged than that nice pretty white that it was before with an angry face in it, or scary face, whatever you wanna call it. All right, I'm gonna let this dry, and to do this one, we can do the same exact thing to it and put another face in here if we like, or we can keep this one brass, it doesn't matter. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead, while I've got this paint out, I'm gonna just go ahead and put some orange on it because this is definitely too, too bright for me. Um, I don't know. You have a haunted house, bright mirrors. It's not really in there too often. All right, so that is a very bright gold, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually use some real acrylic that's not watered down. I just feel like it's too bright for what I'm doing. So I need to really darken it up some. I think I may have grabbed an acrylic that is dried out. That's how often I use these things. All right, so here's one. I still have some of those huge coming through, but definitely don't want all of that. I'm 
I'm just dabbing it some with this baby wipe just to kind of take back some of it. And then there you have a mirror that's not so bright anymore. All right. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful and hopefully you'll be able to make your own haunted mirrors with this tutorial. And if you do, please post them on my Facebook page. I'd love to see what you did. And if you learn anything new while doing it or come across an idea that you think works better or know something that works better, let me know. Again, um, this paint thinner did not work for me. I bought this to try it because I had saw somebody do it on um, YouTube with a real haunted mirror and um, that didn't work. So I came up with my own idea and maybe you have an idea as well. They use paint thinner to thin out the back of the mirror. I use sandpaper. It doesn't matter. It's haunted so it can be scratchy. Um, like, subscribe, question, suggestion below and follow the Facebook page and follow my blog. And then if you like this mirror and you think you would be interested in purchasing them on the Etsy shop, leave a comment below because I may end up putting it on the Etsy shop if that's something that you would like to do. All right. And children, don't try this. It's not for kids. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.